everyone. Thank you so much for clicking on this Netflix review. The fact that you're willing to sacrifice a few minutes out of your day to watch my content really means the world to me, and I really do appreciate it. I just want to let you guys know that I review everything that has just been released on Netflix. So if you're curious about what you want to watch, whether it's good or not, come check out my channel because I will let you know. So subscribe to my channel so I can keep you up to date and save you time. So guys, today we're going to be talking about the new Netflix series, Who Killed Sarah? The series is ultimately about Alex, whose sister, Sarah, is murdered and he is sent to prison and blamed for it. He did not commit the murder and he ultimately, after 18 years, is released from prison and he wants to go seek revenge on the family that killed his sister. Sounds brilliant, sounds really exciting, but I feel very neutral about it. This is one of those series where it seemed to do everything right, but for one reason or another, I just didn't engage with it. And that, it's, it's missing that spark, for lack of a better word. I will say this, the beginning is slow, but after episode five or six, everything starts to speed up and it gets a lot more exciting, it gets a lot more engaging. But I think those first initial five episodes really drag down my enjoyment of the rest of the series. Those first five episodes are incredibly crucial and important in introducing the viewer to the characters, to their motivations and to their dreams and desires and their understanding of how the world works as well as their perception of the world. Those are incredibly important pillars that they've created and erected so that we can understand how each character thinks. And what's great about this series is that every character is so well developed. Every character has incredibly complex motives and emotions. And the performances given by the actors are great. That is probably the highlight of the series for me, is how well realized every single character is. No one is two-dimensional. Everyone is three-dimensional. They're well thought out. As I said, they've got great motivations and everything is well established. But besides the great motivations for the characters and the great performances, I don't know if the series necessarily has a lot going for it. The characters are enjoyable enough and they're engaging enough, but I don't necessarily enjoy all of them. And that's fine because I think this series does a great job of capturing humanity in its essence. You're not going to necessarily like everyone you meet. You're not going to enjoy everyone you come across. The series does a great job of creating a variety of characters in a variety of positions. And that feels very real. Unfortunately, most of them just didn't resonate with me. The series is also shot really, really well. The thing I love most, this is going to sound so lame, was the depth of field with the majority of the shots they got. It's just incredibly beautiful. They've got this incredible depth of field effect going on so that only the subject is ever in focus and the rest is just blurred out. And it just looks really pretty, really beautiful for those slow sequences, the ones that really just need their time. It's mostly about the aesthetic and how everything looks. It really looks great. And it's a very well shot series. But as I've mentioned before, it's missing like that spark. It's miss missing that bit that really gets me going, that gets me engaged. And I can't quite put my finger on it. I think the biggest issue I have might be with the protagonist of the series. This guy is someone that believes he can take on the world, that he can do it all, that he doesn't need help from anyone. But by the end of the first episode, he's already been beaten up and put in hospital. So for someone that wants to go on this whole revenge plot, for someone that wants to become the Punisher in all intents and purposes, the fact that he's in hospital after the first episode leads me to believe, cool, this isn't a guy that can look after himself. Yes, now we've seen that he can be vulnerable, which is great in a protagonist. But it's to the point where he clearly is in over his head. But I think also that's where the supporting cast really saves the show. I know I've spoken a lot about how well characterized all of the characters are in this series. But it's definitely the series' highest point. If you think about series like The Walking Dead and Game of Thrones, what really makes those series stand out is that you had well-developed characters that you started to care about. And it's very similar in this series. The only unfortunate thing is that the main story of the series isn't that engaging or captivating. So I feel a lot like the characters and the performers were betrayed by the primary story moving throughout the series. But guys, thank you so much for watching this review. You guys are the best. You're awesome. Please subscribe to my channel. Give this video a like. And I hope to see you again in another review.